Thank you very much for holding today's uh, hearing, and thanks for our witnesses for uh, being here, because this is a really important subject, and uh, as you can tell, this committee is very concerned with. Uh, Mr. Harrell, you cite in your testimony our nuclear fuel supply chain and, uh, and our over-reliance on Russia for fuel that powers our current advanced reactors. I've long believed that nuclear energy can be a game changer. And for the United States, it's unfortunate we have surrendered our leadership and competitive edge in the nuclear fuel space. Uh, alarmingly, 90% of the uranium purchased for U.S. Uh, use in the United States reactors today is produced by foreign countries, including Russia. I ask you unanimous consent, uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, include in the, our, an article from Nuclear Newswire that highlights these issues entitled, On the Verge of a Crisis, the U.S. Nuclear Fuel uh, Gordian Knot. And uh, Mr. Harrell, uh, what are the implications if we don't do anything to address this problem and the U.S. continues to be reliant on Russia and Russia-aligned nations for nuclear fuel? Uh, thank you, Congressman, and a happy birthday, and, and, and appreciate the question. Uh, uh, we, we potentially, if we fail to invest in the U.S. supply chain, we, we could reach this catch-22, where we have really exciting commercial technologies that both can improve affordability, reliability, and our national security in this country, and can allow us to re reassert ourselves with global leadership and really push to, to, to compete with Russia and China in the global marketplace and deploy in countries like uh, in, in Africa, in the regions like Africa, the Middle East, uh, and Europe. And so, frankly, our, our failure to do so uh, has the likelihood of, of both threatening our national security and th threatening global energy security. And the invasion in, of Ukraine by Russia has only further accentuated that point. Okay, let me just follow up on something you said. You know, that's we failed to invest in our uh, United States supply chain. What's holding us back? Uh, ourselves. Well, uh, we, again, <laughs> but why? Uh, we need to make some some smart long term investments that uh, take matters into our own hands, so that we uh, and our allies can can produce can both mine, can produce, uh, and enrich our, our, our resources here at home or within our kind of like-minded allied countries. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, I, I do think the regulatory barriers are going to be, uh, be a problem here in the U.S. We need to modernize the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I am worried that we're going to have uh, cutting-edge technologies that aren't able to get through an antiquated regulatory system. Uh, we need to lead by doing. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned in my testimony, it's the era of the deployment, and, and we need a regulator that's nimble and, and ready to deploy these exciting tech. Well, you know, I introduced uh, H.R. 1086, which is the Nuclear Fuel Security Act, and this legislation is the House Companion of the Bipartisan Bill introduced by the senior senators from West Virginia and Wyoming, and that bill would establish the uh, Nuclear Fuel Security Program to increase the quantity of low enriched uranium and high assay low enriched uranium produced by U.S. Uh, en nuclear energy companies, expand the American Assured Fuel Supply Program to ensure the availability of domestically produced, converted, and enriched uranium in the event of a, a supply disruption. You never know when that might happen. And then also uh, established that uh, HALU for Advanced Nuclear Reactor Demonstration pro uh, Projects Program. Uh, you know, again, uh, uh, Mr. Harrell, how important is it for con Congress now to act and pass this legislation like this legis the bill that I have to send signals needed for the industry to respond and build up our domestic capacity and I hate to, hate to say it this way, in a timely manner. It's an urgent priority, Congressman, and I should give you kudos. I know you've been talking about this issue for, for many years, and, and I think the Ukraine issue has brought it even more to the forefront. Uh, as I mentioned, 13 new reactor companies to come before the NRC by 2027. Uh, we need to start ramping up our enrichment capacity, our HALU domestic uh, production capacity now, so we have time to license those facilities, to build them, and then provide the fuel needed for this new wave of reactors. There are a bunch of exciting companies that are all looking at deploying here in the U.S. by the late 2020s and early 30s. If we don't make the investments now, we may have this catch-22 fuel situation, which would be uh, really a... Uh, 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 e catastrophic for both our, our security interest, our economic interest, and, uh, and, and ultimately our emissions goals as well. Well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Repco, um, how important is it for Duke to have certainty over fuel sourcing as you look to implement your carbon plan and meet your customers' needs? It's, it's absolutely critical, as I talked about, eight gigawatts. So if you think about that, that's over 20 SMRs or, you know, the small advanced reactors. And you typically put those in, in sites of four to five at a site just for economies of scale. 
But to sustain that, that operations for that energy output, it will be absolutely critical to have that sustained supply. Well, thank you. Mr. Chairman, my time has expired, and I yield back.